Hi, and welcome to our cost accounting video series on flexible budgets. And in these videos, we're going to be specifically looking at overhead variances. So variable overhead variances and fixed overhead variances, and also how we can calculate the total overhead variances as well. So let's start our discussion by looking at how we calculate variable overhead variances and specifically the use of the diagram. So the diagram is going to look very similar to the one that we used in calculating direct material variances and direct labor variances. So we'll start out by drawing that and we're going to use a three peg system. We'll talk briefly about the four peg system here in just a little bit, but I want, I want to use the three peg system because it keeps us similar to what we've learned with direct material variances and direct labor variances. So as we have always done in the past, we're gonna label everything. So the first peg was actual quantity times actual price. The second peg is actual quantity times standard price. And the third peg will be standard quantity times standard price. And our variances for variable overhead, we have a spending variance and we also have an efficiency variance that we'll look at. And just like with materials and labor, we can sum the two variances to get a flexible budget variance. Now remember when I say sum, if the two variances are different signs, meaning one is favorable, one is unfavorable, we would get a difference in the two. All right, so before we move on, I wanna talk about this guy right here, actual quantity. Now, when we were talking about materials, actual quantity was materials. When we looked at labor, actual quantity was labor, typically labor hours. Well, what is actual quantity when we're talking about overhead? Well, if you think back to our discussion on how we apply overhead to jobs, we, already had, we, we always had to have a cost driver. What is driving our cost? Specifically, we're talking about overhead. And in this case, the actual quantity is specifically speaking to the cost driver. So it could be direct labor hours. It could be machine hours. So many different things. It could even be um, production level. So many different things that actual quantity could be. It's whatever is driving your overhead cost. What are overhead costs based on? So let's look at an example of calculating variable overhead. So GQ Clothing is a manufacturer of designer suits. The cost of each suit is the sum of three variable costs, direct materials, direct labor, and overhead, and one fixed cost category, overhead. Variable overhead cost is allocated to each suit on the basis of direct labor hours per suit. For June 2009, each suit is budgeted to take four labor hours. Budgeted variable overhead cost per labor hour is $12. The budgeted number of suits to be manufactured in June is 1,040. And actual variable overhead cost in June were $52,164 for 1,080 suits started and completed. There were no beginning or ending inventories of suits. Actual direct labor hours for June were 4,536. So we need to compute the flexible budget variance, the spending variance, and the efficiency variance for variable overhead. So the first thing we want to do is draw our chart and label everything. Okay, so the first peg, actual quantity times actual price. Second peg, actual quantity times standard price. Third peg, standard quantity times standard price. Our first variance we will calculate for variable overhead is a spending variance. And the second one is the efficiency variance. And then we'll finally calculate the flexible budget variance. Okay, so let's look about these numbers here. So first off, because it's overhead, we have to think, what is my cost driver? And they tell us in the story that overhead cost is allocated to each suit on the basis of direct labor hours. So we know we're looking for hours here, labor hours. So what are the actual quantity of direct labor hours? Well, they tell us actual direct labor hours for June were 4,536 hours. Now we need the actual price. Well, the actual price, they don't actually give us. But what they do give us is our total 
actual overhead cost or variable overhead cost. And they tell us that that is $52,164. So if we want to, we can calculate that actual price by taking $52,164 and dividing it by the actual quantity of 4,536 hours. And when you do that, you should come out with $11.50 per hour. So now we can move on over to the second pig. We've already found actual quantity, which was 4536. Now we need the standard price, the price we should have paid, the budgeted price for our for a um, labor hour. And they tell us in the story that the budgeted variable overhead cost per labor hour is $12. So our middle peg is $54,432. Then we can go ahead and calculate our last peg before we calculate our variances. So we found the standard price in peg number two there, so I'll just go ahead and do that. And now we have to find standard quantity. So remember the definition that I gave you in earlier videos of standard quantity. What should have happened at the actual level of production? So what was the actual level of production? Well, they tell us that the actual variable overhead cost were 52100 for a 1,080 suits started and completed. So that is actual production, 1,080 suits. What should have happened? Well, we're talking about overhead here, so we're looking at the cost driver, and the cost driver happens to be direct labor hours. So we're thinking, well, how many direct labor hours should have been used per suit? And they tell us each suit is budgeted to take four labor hours. Okay, so we're going to use that to calculate our standard quantity. And when you do that, we come out with $51,840. And now we can calculate our variances. So if you take the difference in pegs one and two, we get our spending variance of $2,268. Now we need to determine if it's favorable or unfavorable. So let's forget all the numbers and just look at the equations here. The only difference in equation one and two is price. So our actual price was $11.50, and our budgeted price was $12. So we actually paid $0.50 cent less per labor hour than we should have, or than we thought we would have. That's a good thing. So that would be a favorable variance. To calculate the efficiency variance for variable overhead, we will take the difference in pegs 2 and 3. So when you do that mathematically, we find that efficiency variance is $2,592. The only difference in pegs two and three is quantity. So when we look at the quantity here, we find that the actual quantity of hours used is more than 1,080 times four. Therefore, the efficiency variance would be unfavorable. Now we want to find the flexible budget variance. Now because our two variances are different signs, if you want to say that, we'll get a difference in the two to get the flexible budget variance. So the difference in the spending and efficiency variance is 324. The sign will be the one with the highest number. So the highest number is unfavorable, so we'll carry down the unfavorable sign there. So our flexible overall budget is unfavorable. All right, so let's look at this little story down here below and see if we can answer these questions. So GQ had a favorable spending variance because the actual variable overhead rate per direct labor hour was less than the budgeted. So that gave us a favorable spending variance. It had an unfavorable efficiency variance because each suit averaged more labor hours than budgeted. 